Can you hear the drum? Hey, There's a revolution coming! Hello buddies, welcome back, and this is Hugo again. In this video, I would like to present you a tutorial about how to RC convert this 200 scale ceramic cast destroyer. This kit is from Trumpeter. And to the best of my knowledge, the Trumpeter has three versions. Begins with the ceramic the first generation and comes with the second. Well, in China, we also have a simplified version named Hangzhou Destroyer. The only difference is Hangzhou doesn't consult with any photo etches. But all the three are sharing the same how and most of plastic kit. Just briefly get through the how and you could feel its impressive size, especially for a modern destroyer. And we could see it has 78 cm in length and relatively large volume to carry on the electronics. Besides, fundamentally it has just dual propulsion shaft and two propellers. So it is very friendly to new beginners to set up their first RC ship. Here we have a close look on our RC kit. Let's get started from the shafting box. And we have pre-installed the stainless steel shaft. And we can see the brass handmade rice port and comes with the propeller. What's more, here we have brass couplings and mounts and comes with a pair of powerful motors with aluminum heatsink. Here we have a look on our shiny rudder, which is all handmade and foldable. This is steering arm connect with the buckles and controlled by the servo. In addition, we also provide relative screws. For further introduce our rudder, here we pick it up to see how it works. It has internal mechanism which fully simulate the shift in wheel circumstances. Continuously, let's check the brass propeller. It is all handmade and cutting sharply into five blades. See, every piece of blade has well been polished, and the L shape of the propeller is fully simulated wheel destroyer. I have to commit Trumpy to originally inject this hell in dual rooted setting. However, as I referenced for on-site photo available on Russian internet, the single rooted plan may be the truth. That's why I should emphasize this issue as I would perceive the fellow modification work in what I convinced. Anyway, I will discuss it later. Back on installing the shafting box, the ceremony is much easier comparing with previous tutorials. The major factor is it originally has a gearbox to let us calibrate the shafting box. Besides, it also has a battery box because it has been identified as an electric model if you have access to Hangzhou Destroyer in China. Removing the internal structure is my general approach as you may be familiar with this procedure in my previous videos. Exactly, I really require a tiny and clean cabin to install the motors and electronics. For personal tips, if you don't have a professional craft tool like that, I would highly recommend you just feel free to use the nail clips instead. Before I really get started, the brass coupling together with the mount could be pre-assembly on the motor. Then in fellow step, it would align the motor with the stainless steel shaft. Correspondingly, such alignment is always be the most essential section to make sure the motor running smoothly in high speed. After fasten the screws from both sides, now I gently rotate the couplings and try to find out the balance position. That position should be fulfilled the circumstances like the shafting rotates smoothly with motor, while there is no vibration or deformation on each component. The same procedure could be made on the other side. After the super glue pre locking the right section, now I use the epoxy to strengthen the structure, especially to let the brass mount firmly fix with the hull. Kindly notice there is no reverse because once it gets solidification, it will be even stronger than the plastic. As been mentioned, in this section, I will let you know how to install the single rudder 
instead of twin setting. Even though I've heard the rumors like the Russian handover to Chinese Navy might not be the same. Up till now, there is no evidence or photos like shooting from dry dock to support such comments. After the file slot to install the router, the next step should be filling the bilateral holes and the conjunction parts. Looking inside, the stuffing tube has well been strengthened by epoxy. At the same time, we can manually turn in the router to make sure it operates smoothly. The part I used is from Tamiya, the epoxy version is for restructuring purpose while the basic type is for polishing. Distinguished from 3D painting a basket to hold a servo, this time I just utilized a wire cut ABS board to fix it up. The servo I use is Emacs, which is 12 grand applied with full metal gearbox. Instead of screwing the servo above the board, we have to fix it on the opposite side. Obviously, all this kinematic part should be beneath the deck. Otherwise, the end of servo or steering buckle may have the chance to jack the dead up while operating. The steel rod or say pole rod is for transferring the torque from servo to rotor. On one hand, we keep it in dried assembly for further adjustment, while on the other end has well been welded. To begin with locking the fixed buckle with rotor's arm, exactly painstaking efforts and patience are required. Then we deal with the same procedure on servo arm. Once every part is ready and hot, we will take a rehearsal to gently adjust the pro rod in final precision. As a final point, super glue is for the quick but temporary locking function. Just a few seconds later, here we double check the buckles to have sufficient redundant space to the upper deck. In the fellow sections, there are several of general process has well been introduced in my previous tutorials. Just like welding the electric circuit with the ESC, installing the aluminum heatsink and the final assembly of the propeller. Relative rehearsals are required to test the RC control like accelerating, reversing and steering. Frankly speaking, I'm really can't help to let my destroyer take the water.